Hi, this is Moya Kihuba of Institute of Finance, Education Now. In this podcast, we shall be looking at hypothesis testing. After going through the podcast, you should be able to, one, define hypothesis testing, two, identify four steps of hypothesis testing, three, define null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, level of significance, test statistic, p-value, and statistical significance. Or, of course, at the end of it all, there will be some questions. Karibuni. What is hypothesis testing? We alternatively refer to hypothesis testing as significant testing. It is a method for testing a claim or a hypothesis about a parameter in a population using data measured in a sample. It is a systematic way to test claims or ideas about a group or population. Hypothesis testing is thus a method by which we select samples to learn more about characteristics of a given population. To illustrate, imagine you read an article stating that children in Kenya watch an average of three hours of TV per week. To test if this claim is indeed true, you may want to to carry out data, to carry out data collection, where you record the time in hours that a group of, say, 20 Kenyan children, which now will be our sample, among all the children in Kenya, our population, watch TV. This would mean we measure for the 20 children. The mean that we measure for the 20 children is the sample mean. We then, we can then compare the sample mean we select to the population that has been stated in the article that we read. There are two types of hypothesis. And we'll come back to this later. A null hypothesis, a statement about a population parameter such as mean, which you think is true. An alternative hypothesis, a statement that directly contradicts a null hypothesis by stating that the actual value of the population is less than, greater than, or not equal to the value stated in the null hypothesis. Normally, we show them as such. Null hypothesis is abbreviated as H0, whereas the alternative hypothesis is identified as H1. Of course, you should note that these two hypotheses cannot be simultaneous true. Only one of them will be true. Likewise, these two hypotheses cannot be simultaneously false. Only one of them will be false. The acceptance or rejection of a particular hypothesis leads to the acceptance or rejection of a particular decision. There are four steps involved in testing hypotheses, and we'll look at them in turns. The first step is to state the hypothesis. We begin by stating the value of a population mean in in a null hypothesis, which we presume is true. For the children watching TV, for instance, we state that the null that the children in Kenya watch an average of three hours of TV per week. This is a starting point so that we can decide whether this is likely to be true. You, you may be familiar with the presumption of, you know, uh, of innocence until proven guilty. When you put a defendant on a trial, the court starts by assuming that the defendant is innocent. The basis of the decision is to determine whether this assumption is true. Similarly, in hypothesis testing, we start by assuming that the hypothesis or claim we are testing is true. This is stated as the null hypothesis. The basis of decision is to determine whether this assumption is likely to be true. It's good we recall that we defined the null hypothesis as a statement about a population parameter such as mean that is assumed to be true. And this is the starting point. All right? We also have 
to start to, to state the alternative hypothesis. You know, if we kept in mind that the only reason we are testing the null hypothesis is because we think it is long, we state what we think is long about the null hypothesis in an alternative hypothesis. For instance, for the children viewing TV example, we may have reason to believe that children view for more than three hours or less than three hours of TV per week. When we are uncertain about the direction, we can state the value in a null hypothesis as it is not equal to three hours. Eh? In the courtroom example that we give, we give, since the defendant is assumed to be innocent, this is the null hypothesis, so to speak. The burden is on the prosecution to conduct a trial to show evidence that the defendant is not innocent. In a similar way, we assume that the hypothesis is true, placing the burden on the researcher to conduct a study to show that, to show evidence that the null hypothesis is unlikely to be true. Regardless, we we'll always make a decision about the null hypothesis. That, that is, is it likely or unlikely to be true? That, that is the null that the, the hypothesis that you've stated in the TV example. And then the next step is to set a criteria for decision making. To set the criteria for this for a decision, we state the level of significance for a test. This is similar to the criteria that the court uses in criminal trial. The court decides whether the evidence presented shows guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and this now is the criterion. Eh? Likewise, in hypothesis testing, we collect the data to show that the null hypothesis is not true based on likelihood of selecting a sample mean from a population, and this is the likelihood criteria. The likelihood, or the level of significance, is typically set at 5% in most research studies. When the probability of obtaining a sample mean is less than 5%, if the null hypothesis were true, then we conclude that the sample, are select, that the sample we selected is too unlikely, so we reject the null hypothesis. We may want to define the level of, the level of significance or significance level as the criterion of judgment upon which decision is made regarding the value stated in the null hypothesis. The criterion is based on probability of obtaining a, st a, a statistic measured in sample if the value stated in the null hypothesis were true. In behavioral science, I repeat, the criterion or level of significance is typically set at 5%. When the probability of obtaining sample mean is less than 5% in the null hypothesis were true, then we reject the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis establishes where to place the level of significance. Remember, that we know that the, mean, the sample mean will equal population mean on average if the null hypothesis is true. All other possible values of sample mean are normally distributed, and this is something that we refer to as central limit theorem. The empirical, report, uh, the, the empirical rule tells us that at 95% of all sample mean fall within two standard deviation of the population mean, indicating that there is less than 5% probability of obtaining a sample mean that is beyond two standard deviations from the population mean. Now, if we could see this figure here, eh? you know, somehow we are quite uncertain. Eh? Sorry for that. Because you see, we have two tails. Eh? On the one which is on our left, 
we have children washing less than TV less than three hours per week. On the which is the null, which is the alternative, sorry. And then on the one which is on our light, children washing more than. But because we are not certain, we take the middle position. Children do not watch TV for more than two, three hours in a week. The third step now is to compute the test statistic. Suppose we measure a sample mean equal to four hours per week for children viewing television. To make a decision, we need to evaluate how likely this sample outcome is. If the population mean stated by the null hypothesis, three hours per week is true, we use a test statistic to determine this likelihood. Specifically, a test statistic tells us how far or how many standard deviation a sample mean is from the population mean. The larger the value of the test statistic, the further the, the distance or the number of standard deviation a sample mean is from the population mean stated in the null hypothesis. The value of the test statistic is used in making decision regarding the null hypothesis, which is our step number four. And before we start on step number four, perhaps it's good to re-emphasize that the test statistic is a mathematical formula that allows researchers to determine the likelihood of obtaining sample outcomes if the null hypothesis were true. Now, in fourth step, making a decision, we use the value of a test statistic to make a decision about the null hypothesis. The decision is based on the probability of obtaining a sample mean, given that the value stated in null hypothesis is, is true. If the probability of obtaining a sample is less than 5%, when the null hypothesis is true, then the decision is to reject the null hypothesis. If the probability of obtaining a sample mean is greater than 5%, when the null hypothesis is true, then the decision is to retain the null hypothesis. In sum, these are the two decisions a researcher can make. One, reject the null hypothesis. The, the sample mean is associated with low probability of occurrence when the null is true, or to retain the null hypothesis. The sample mean is associated with higher probability of occurrence when the mean is true. The probability of obtaining a sample mean, given the, the value stated in the null hypothesis is true, is stated by a p-value. The p-value is a probability. It varies between 0 and 1 and can never be negative. You recall that in step two, we stated that the criteria or the probability of obtaining a sample mean at which point we will decide to reject the value stated in the null hypothesis, which is typically set at 5% in behavioral research. To make a decision, we compare the p-value to the criterion set in step two. Now, a p-value is the probability of obtaining a sample outcome given the value stated in the null hypothesis is true. The p-value for obtaining a sample outcome is compared to the level of significance. Significance or statistical significance describes a decision made concerning a value stated in the null hypothesis. When the null hypothesis is rejected, we lose significance. When the null hypothesis is retained, we fail to lose the significance. When the p-value is less than 5%, that is p is less than 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. We will refer to p less than 0.05 as a criterion 
for deciding to reject the null hypothesis, although we note that when p-value is equal to 0.05, the decision is also to reject the null hypothesis. When the p-value is greater than 5%, we retain the null hypothesis. The decision to reject or retain the null hypothesis is called significance, statistical significance if you may. When p-value is less than 0.05, we reach significance. The decision is to reject the null hypothesis. When p-value is greater than 0.05, we fail to reach significance. The decision is to retain the hypothesis. Let's see whether we still remember what we covered eh? Go through those sections. In the next session, we shall look at types of errors. That's the end. Thank you, everyone. Have an absolutely, absolutely fantastic day, and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe and share. Thank you.